Janome. Hi, everyone. How are you? It's good to see everyone. Welcome to Genomi Live. I'm going to take a couple minutes here and uh, make sure that everyone can get on. Um, this is a new setup for me. So if you can see my cameras OK and you can hear my voice, go ahead and uh, post something in the chat so I know that you can hear me. Uh, so it doesn't look like someone just talking in silence. So welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Jerry Granada, and I am an educator for Genomi, and I am really thrilled to be here today, and I can't wait to help uh, show you a new skill that you may learn. Oh, there's people popping in. Hey, hi, everybody. Good to see you. Um, can you hear me okay? Because this is a new microphone, too. So awesome. It says you can hear me and see me. Great. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, hello, everyone. If you could go ahead and uh, post where you're from, I'd love to see that. Um, it's just me today, so I'll just let you know uh, right away that I may or may not catch your comments, but I will stick around after, uh, after this presentation, and I will try to get to as many questions as I can if I can't answer them here. We do have some Genomi team members who are monitoring the comments section, and they may be able to jump in and help answer your questions. So don't worry. We'll get your, your questions answered. Um, wow, we're all coming. England, Canada. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. This is fantastic. All right, we're going to let you all kind of pop in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I am from Palm Springs, California, just so you know where I am. Uh, again, Jerry Granada, I'm a Genomi educator. Uh, welcome to week four of the Summertime Skill Builders. Uh, this is such a great program. Um, this is a new contest that Genomi is doing. It's going to take place every Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday, there's going to be a live show. Uh, it started on June 8th, and it's going to go all the way to August 24th. And that's important to keep those dates because I'm going to let you know how this is all going to work. So every week, there's going to be a new skill that is shown and demonstrated to help you improve your overall sewing knowledge. So then how you're going to respond is every week you're going to watch the video and then you're going to have one week. So until 3 p.m. the following Wednesday to comment a photo of yourself and your project that shows that you practice the skill in the video. Now, it doesn't have to be a full blown quilt or a full blown project. Go ahead and post like um, just uh, and depending on your level of, of skill, you, you may be uncomfortable with some of the skills. You may be great with some of the skills. If you're just comfortable doing something small, like a little sample, awesome. We just need to see you doing that skill. So once you post your photo to the comments, you're going to head over to the Skill Builders page on the Genomi site to complete your entry to be in the drawing. Now, the link to that is going to be either in the caption box or in the comment. One of our Genomi team members will post that link. And uh, so you'll be able to follow that. So don't worry, it'll be there. Um, and then the prize is going to be a bundle valued at about $500. So if not over knowing Genomi. So at the end of the summer, five people are going to be chosen at random and you're going to win the Genomi prize bundle. So this, now this is important. This includes a free service for your machine at a participating authorized dealer. How awesome is that? So how great would it be to get your machine all nice and clean and pretty and happy and get its little spa treatment all ready for those holiday projects that you're going to have coming up? Because that's coming up too pretty quick. I know how that works. Um, I, I just how many of you have already started your winter projects? Because it's going to, you know how this goes, it starts rolling <laughs> and all of a sudden you run out of time. So this is an awesome deal, right? Genomi is just such a wonderful company, and I think this is such a great idea. So let's get started. So I'm going to tell you what skill you're going to learn today, and we're going to talk about free motion quilting. Now, I know some of you, this is a little bit of a scary topic. I've, I've met you all at events. I've talked to you at live events. Um, and this is the one area where some of you are having a little bit of trouble. Now, in all sense, in all transparency, this is not a full-blown free motion class. This is just uh, me giving you enough information to do the skill. But I do teach a class on this, and I would love to <clears throat> love to be able to present that for you at some point as well. But I'm going to give you enough to, to really sink your teeth into uh, so that you can enter the contest. Because the more times you enter, you can enter every week if you want. Um, the more you enter, the better your chances of winning. So do the skill, please try them. And you never know, you might find something that you absolutely love. So with free motion quilting, I'm gonna help try take some of the fear out of it. 
And a lot of the fear comes from the fact that some of you just aren't practicing enough. That may be all it is. Some of you may take to this like fish and water. And some of you, this may be like iron sharpening iron. <laughs> But just practice it. And I, I, I know that you'll get better. I really do. So I'm going to tell you what free motion is and what it is not. So free motion quilting is just that. It is free motion. It is self-guided. You are creating all the patterns. Uh, you're going to drop your feed dogs. Now, the great thing about this technique, too, is this can be done on any Janome machine where you can drop your feed dogs. So you're going to have to break out those manuals. I know. <laughs> Some of you are like, I don't even know where mine is, but try to find it, um, break it out, make sure that your machine can, you can drop your feed dogs. Now, some you can do it automatically, some you're going to have to do it manually. That's fine. As long as you can drop them. I know there's some machines where you have a plate that you can cover uh, your feed dogs as well, but you should be, most of you should be able to do this technique. So, all right. So one thing that it is not is this is not a pattern that's built into your machine, right? This is not an embroidery. This is not uh, like a computerized thing. You are creating all of the designs yourself. It's self-guided free motion. Um, one thing that, that that kind of scares a lot of people sometimes too, because they're like, ah, I don't know how to do that. Get a little sketchbook and just start sketching. I'm not going to say drawing. It's just sketch. Just start doodling. Just doodle some feathers. Doodle some circles. Doodle some things like that. And the next thing you know, you're going to start acquiring all of these really nice patterns. Um, also, if you go to um, like a hotel and there's a wallpaper or a carpet that looks really... My friends laugh at me because I'm always taking pictures of wallpaper. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, this would make a great quilt pattern. So just save those things and... Uh, have those in your in your toolbox, uh, so to speak. And then you can maybe go sketch them out roughly later. So just kind of open your mind to all these things. I had an art teacher once who told me to look up because we're always looking down, right? He said, look up and you'll see the most amazing things. So look up too. You might find like some dental molding or uh, in, a, in a store or in a, again, a hotel where, where all of a sudden you're finding all of these wonderful patterns. So, all right. So this is a skill that you're going to have to practice, right? Like I said, some of you may love it. Some of you may not be crazy about it. If you are having problems with it, do me a favor. Don't beat yourself up, okay? Be kind to yourself. Um, you're not going to break the machine. This is just a technique that you're going to have to learn. Remember, when you started driving, you weren't born learning how to drive, right? This is a skill you had to learn and you had to practice it to get better at it. And again, some of you were really good at it. Some of you, you just had to get a little more practice. Same thing here. It's a new skill, especially if you've never done it before. Um, now, I'm just going to tell you that uh, the way that I quilt, the way that I'm going to show you is the way that I do it. And it's a way. It's not the way. There are many, many different ways to free motion quilt. And you can get on YouTube or you can take lessons at quilt shops and quilt shows from various free motion teachers. I'm going to give you just the basics here so that you can, um, you can get into the contest and maybe open up a new world of quilting. All right. So I'm those of you who know me, I'm a rule breaker, right? I use all the weirdest fabrics in my quilts. Um, I'm not an all cotton guy most of the time, uh, as you'll see in some of the samples that I'm going to tease you with. Um, I use very unusual fabrics. So um, one thing uh, that, like I said, I'm a very big rule breaker. But the one thing that I like to tell people is kind of a steadfast rule for me um, is don't practice on your project. All right. So don't practice on your good quilt that you want to quilt on, because trust me, nobody in this world dislikes ripping out stitches more than this guy. Right. <laughs> I dislike it. So um, I, I just I get so frustrated with it. So I try to plan things out as much as I can um, and don't practice on your quilt. Have like I have a stack of quilt sandwiches by my machine and every day or every couple of days, however, whenever I can get some time, um, I will practice and I will, you know, just kind of warm up and go through, practice some little things um, and warm up and get all the stress of the day out. Then I will go to my project that that way you're all warmed up. Your brain is ready to go. Your muscles are warmed up. All the stress of the day is out because trust me, all that stress is going to go right here through your hands, arms, and fingers right into your project, and you're going to be ripping out, and that's not good. <laughs> it's not. It's frustrating when you're trying to finish a project and you have to rip out stitches. So talking about planning, that's another thing I want to talk about, too, is um, 
one thing that I hear from a lot of people is I get stuck. I, I sort of like paint myself into a corner. One thing you want to do is bef- don't just rush into quilting when you sit down, right? Think about it. Think about how, you know, when you take a trip, you have to plan the trip, right? You're not just like getting in a car and going. I would love to do that. I'm very spontaneous. But most of the time I have to plan out the trip. Where am I going to go? How am I going to get there? Where am I going to stay? Same thing with free motion quilting. Kind of plan out your your route, so to speak, um, and and just kind of... Look at your quilt, look at the area that you want to quilt in and say, okay, where am I going? How am I going to get out of it to get to the next section? And once you have that, trust me, that's about 90% of it. (laughs) And then it's just a matter of practicing the skill. So once you can kind of figure your way in and out, um, you should be absolutely fine. Okay, let's talk about notions very quickly. Um, And then we're going to start to quilt. So I like to use a top stitch needle for quilting, and there's various reasons for that. You can use other needles, absolutely. There's no steadfast rule, whatever works for you. I personally, remember it's my way, not the way, but I like to, I like to use a top stitch needle, and here's why. Most of the time, you're going through multiple layers. Now, usually the minimum is going to be a, a backing, a batting, and a top, right? And those are going to be a layer of cotton, two layers of cotton and a layer of batting. And it could be the thinnest, you know, thin it like thermor or some kind of warm and natural kind of cotton. Um, But you're still going through multiple layers. What I find is that the top stitch needle has a larger eye. And what that does is it gives the thread some breathing room so that it can go through all the layers and give itself some room. So it's not like really hard tension against the needle. So it does allow some breathing room for the thread. And I just find I have greater success. Um, if you want to use a, a like quilting needle or something like that, uh, fine. You can use it. If that's what works for you, if you've been free motion quilting and what works for you works, great. Stay with that. But if it's not, try a top stitch needle. That might work a little better. Um, I kind of use like an 80-12. That's kind of a standard for me, depending on the thread. Most of the time I work with a 40 weight thread, but some of you may like to use a thinner, like a 60 or 100 weight thread, like a silk. In that case, you may want to like go down a needle size, like to a 60 or 70, but, and here's a big but, um, you want to be careful if you have an automatic needle threader, not to use your automatic needle threader with those smaller needles, because you may find that the hook that's in the threader may get bent if you try to go through that really tiny, small eye. So you're going to have to hand thread uh, your smaller, like 60, 70 needles, um, just to make sure that your, your needle threader stays great and stays proper. If you are struggling with an 8012, bump up to a 9014. That's all you got to do. If you're if you're having a problem, just bump up to a little bit bigger needle. Now, when you're working with metallics or monofilaments, you can still use a top stitch needle or you can use a metallic needle. Again, there's a there's a, a larger eye there, so it allows more breathing room for for the thread for the needle to pass through your uh, project. So. Um, Remember, metallic. speaking of metallics, that, that can be a little scary enterprise. A lot of people have trouble with it, um, and I understand that. But a lot of reasons why is they're trying to treat it like a 40 weight, and they're vastly different, right? So when a metallic thread goes through a metallic needle, that's metal on metal that causes friction, which causes heat, which causes thread breakage. So the key to that is slow down. You're going to have to slow down your quilting a little bit. Same when you're doing embroidery, you got to slow your machine down. Um, When you're using metallics, slow down a little bit when you're quilting with your metallic thread, and that should help as well. Also, loosen your tension. Just remember, metallic thread doesn't like to be touched. (laughs) It's like, it's I call it the leave me alone thread. Um, The less guides you can put it through, the less tension you have on it, the better. Um, Also, you may want to set your metallic threads a little bit farther away from your machine on the thread stand. It'll help it relax before it goes into your machine. Um, Also, some of those threads can be a little whippy. And you know what I mean if you've ever used them. They just just like, right? Use those thread nets. The thread nets are wonderful for helping to control that spool and keep those metallics from just whipping and, and monofilaments from just whipping right off your spool. Um, the, that, that, what can happen there is it can be thrown off the tension discs. So the thread can whip right out of your tension discs and now you have no tension and now your stitching is gonna be ugly. So um, just use those thread nets to control everything. Remember uh, monofilaments and think of monofilaments and metallics as like wild ponies, right? They want to be wild and free, (laughs) wild. And I'm a big analogy guy, if you haven't figured this out. 
they're like wild ponies. They want to run wild and free. So you got to corral them and put them in a corral to, to help them stay under control. So if you think of it that way, I think you'll have really, really good success. Okay, you can use anything to quilt with. You can use polys, cottons, metallics, monofilaments, you name it. Um, but what I suggest is that you match the thread with your needle, right? So you're not going to put a silk into a, through a, like a jeans needle, a, a size 100 jeans needle. That would be crazy, right? And vice versa. You're not going to put like a 30 weight through a size 60 needle. Well, you're probably not going to get it into the eye. But my point is, these things are going to cause a lot of rubbing and breakage. So you just want to be real careful and try to match your match your um, thread with your needle size. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about some other things. Um, I've got some notes here to keep myself straight here. So quilting gloves. I love to use quilting gloves. Now some people do not. So I use um, like the the ones like here, like these white ones with you've seen these with the little rubber fingertips. I've used those since I started free motion quilting many, many years ago. And it's just again, it works for me and I love them. Some people I know don't like to wear gloves or have some people actually have a sweat allergy. And if they start sweating, their hands get a rash. I understand. Don't use the gloves. <laughs> um, you may want to use um, something like uh, a drawer liner, those rubbery drawer liners that you could cut in a circle. And what, what my point to, to all of this is that you want to regain control. You want to have control of where you're quilting. You don't want to feel out of control at any given time. You're the driver. You're in the driver's seat. So you got to feel in control. So maybe something like that would work. But I like the gloves because it gives me a little more control when I'm free motion quilting. Also, a slider type of material. And I'll show this when we get over to the machine. Um, but a slider type of material or uh, a, a Teflon oven liner, something like that. Um, on the bed of your machine, boy, my free motion quilting, when I really uh, first started figuring out these things and one of these, uh, somebody suggested one of these slider uh, implements to me, it changed my free motion quilting life. My quilt just slid around like a skater on the ice. It was just wonderful. So I, I really appreciated that. And I've used one ever since. Um, they come in all different sizes. So for your, just check a bed of your machine. Um, you can just check with some of these companies. But basically what it is, is it's like a Teflon top with a rubbery bottom. And the rubber just kind of sticks to your machine. It's not an adhesive. It just kind of sticks there. There's some friction there. So, and I'll show you that. Okay. Also marking tools. Last thing is marking tools. So you may feel more comfortable marking your, your top, your quilt top or your sample uh, that you're going to work on. Um, you can use chalk. You can use, um, you can use any kind of like a uh, fabric marking device that you want to. You don't have to remove it before you post your uh, post your entry. Um, we just need to see that you've done it. So, if, but but if that makes it easier for you, I personally do not mark much. Um, I'm I'm just kind of a free spirit <laughs> when it comes to free motion. So, I, I if I do mark, I'll usually mark like a spine of a feather or something like that. Um, or you know, there on some of the competition quilts that I do. I want to be a little more controlled. So I'll mark a little bit more there and I'll use like a blue washout marker or something like that. Um, so that may help. Um, also like stencils with pounce pads. If you're comfortable using those, by all means, use those. They're wonderful products um, to help you have success because that's the whole point of this, right? So, and beginners may, may find this really handy to use as well because it gives you something to follow, right? I mean, it's otherwise it's like driving blind, right? <laughs> driving with a blindfold. Um, some people are not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable driving blindfolded. So um, you may need to just mark your fabrics just a little bit. Okay, I think I've given you the basics here. So let's go over to the machine and let's get started. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to switch my cameras and there's going to be just a just a second delay here uh, while I my camera flips over. Now, I am on the uh, Janome Continental M7. And so what that means is um, you're going to see my screen here. And those of you who have the M7, you're going to recognize this. Those of you who don't, you still recognize the icons, right? So if, if you don't have an M7, you should probably be able to follow along with me um, and, and do whatever it is that you need to do to have success with your free motion quilting. All right. So here we go. So uh, we have a question here. How do we know the size and weight of the thread? That's a great question, Cynthia. Um, you're going to look on the spool. 
The spool is going to have all the information. It may be on the top, it may be on the inside, but it'll tell you, it'll say, you know, number 50, number 40, or 40 weight, 50 weight. So that's how you're going to know uh, what weight that you have. Okay, so let's, let's get moving on here. So there are a couple ways that I can free motion quilt, right? There's a couple of ways I can set up my machine. Now, you'll notice that some of my stitches here already are grayed out. Why is that? Because I have my straight stitch plate on. So many people I have heard when they're free motioning get frustrated because they're using their zigzag plate and some of the material is getting sucked into the feed dogs, right? That's frustrating. I've had that happen. Boy, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> um, but use the straight stitch plate because what that'll do is it'll keep everything right around the needle and it'll keep everything nice and controlled. So that's why some of these may be grayed out. Now I can simply... Uh, just go right up here. You can see at the very top, there's my stylus. Um, and I can just push, I can just push that and my feed dogs are down. And you notice that my, my presser foot has switched to the PDH foot. Um, it automat another thing I love about Genomi tells you exactly which foot to use with whatever it is, your, whatever technique you're doing. Um, I could do that and I'm all ready to go, right? But another area that you may want to go in that may expand your options, we're going to go all the way over here is to go into uh, the little area here your, it, uh, where you've got sewing. Um, and now I'm going to go over to quilting. And if you follow me right down here, there's my free motion. So I'm going to touch that. And now I have got some options. Again, I'm using my straight stitch plate, but if I had my zigzag plate on, I could zigzag in free motion here. But it's not letting me do that because I don't have the, the correct plate on for that. So I have two straight stitch options here. And that's another reason why I like to go to this area um, because I, I just love uh, that I have all these options. And again, if you're using... Uh, remember I said with metallics and monofilaments, you want to lo lower your tension just a little bit and move a little bit slower. We're going to come right down here. We're going to expand our menu. And there we have our tension, right? So we still have manual tension. Um, you know, that's, that's, never, uh, that's never a problem. We have all sorts of manual. Now, if you want to get back to where you were and you don't remember what your setting was, just hit DFT. That's default. And there the machine goes right back to 4.6. And that's where I'm going to keep it for now. I am using a 40 weight polyester in the top. And another thing that I want to talk about is um, bobbin thread. Now, beginners, I suggest that you use the same thread in the bobbin that you're using on the top. That way, if you have any what we call pokies, <laughs> uh, it, won't, it won't be as bad. You won't notice it. Um, so just for the beginning, you can use, uh, I would use the same in the top. So if I, I've, I've got my 40 weight poly in the top, I would use, I've got a 40 weight poly in the bobbin. Um, just to just to make sure everything plays nicely together. So, all right, uh, let's let's get on here. So now we've got the machine set, and I'm going to close my menu, and I'm ready to go. So now let's head over to the bed of the machine. See, it was that simple. Nothing complicated with our machines. It's very simple. So let's head on over, and now we're at the bed of my machine. And here's where all the magic's going to happen, right here. <laughs> Sorry about my big Godzilla hands attacking the city, but that's, that's just how it's going to have to be, our virtual wonderland here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, remember I talked to you about one of those slider things? So I'm going to roll this back. Do you see this, how it's shining here? This is that rubbery side that I was talking about. Now, again, it's not an adhesive, but all you're going to do is place it on the bed of your machine, and it will essentially stick to your machine. Now, you can see I have my straight stitch plate on. And as you saw in the free motion setting, I've got my PDH foot on. Now there's two types of this foot. There is a closed toe and there is an open toe. Here's closed toe, here's open toe. I like to use the open toe. Um, I just find for me, it, it gives me a little bit better visual. If you like using the closed toe, by all means, use that. All right, so I'm, my machine is already set up. So I've got my top thread, I've got my bobbin thread. I'm going to show you a trick. So I'm gonna roll back my slider, and there's my straight stitch plate. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my bobbin case and I'm gonna redo my bobbin because I want to show you this trick. So I'm going to place my bobbin in as we do, and I'm going to put it under the little finger there as we do, and I'm gonna bring it around. 
Now at this point, normally what you're going to do is cut your thread, right? Don't do that. This is the trick. So what you're going to do is keep it about halfway or just as it rounds the corner there, keep it there, let it go. You want to give yourself a couple inches here and then replace your bobbin case. All right. Now we're going to put the slide, roll our slider back. All right. And now I'm ready to go. So I would put my gloves on at this point. Now, I'm not going to use gloves because I'm working on a very small piece of fabric. So um, I'm not working on a full size quilt. But normally I would have my gloves on here. So let me show you uh, some of the samples. Uh, here's a, sam a sampler that I did all in free motion of things that you can do. So you could do hard lines. You could do feathers. You could do like this worm type of thing. Um, this design is really great for like reflections on water. Here's some more feathers. You can see I like feathers. Here's stippling. Uh, more fun feathers. Here's some pebbling. But these are the kind of things that you can do in free motion. Right? So just wanted to show you that. So I'm going to bring up my um, little piece that I'm going to work with today. Just a plain piece of fabric. Now, I do want to say, those of you who, are, who have the CM17, um, congratulations. It's an awesome machine. But... Um, you're, if you're working with the ASR or the stitch regulator, remember you need to leave a minimum of three-fourths of an inch around your quilt or your project or your sample. That way the foot can read uh, the fabric without giving you any problems. So once you go off, the ASR is not going to be able to read your fabric, right? That makes sense. So leave yourself three-fourths of an inch. And I used some chalk and I drew that in for you. Um, now I'm using the M7 that doesn't have the ASR, so I can go all the way to the edge. But remember, with the CM17, give yourself a little bit of little bit of room here. So what I'm going to do to get started is I am going to just pick a place. Remember, we're going to pick a place. Now I can use my needle up down, or I can use my hand wheel, depending on what you want to do. If you're going to use your hand wheel, use it slowly and very slowly rotate it towards you. Don't ever rotate your hand wheel backwards. Ro rotate it towards you. But I'm going to use my needle up down. I'm going to lower my needle and bring it right back up. And I'm going to pull my project toward me. And then I'm grabbing my top thread here, and I'm giving a little tug. And I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a loop. And you notice what happens. As I'm giving a tug, this bobbin thread pops up. Now there's the loop. That's my bobbin thread. Now I'm going to pull this so that the bobbin thread comes out. And now what that did is um, the bobbin thread is right here. So where it popped up. Now what I'm going to do is bring it right back to where I was, drop my needle, and there I'm ready to start. Now, the reason why, why did I do that? Why did I bring up the bobbin thread? Because it is possible that underneath you could get a really nasty little thread nest. So you want to bring that bobbin thread up. And it's very simple. Again, drop your needle, bring it up. Now, do you see why we left that long tail for the bobbin? Because now um, we can see it. If we used our automatic thread cutter, it would give us a, a short little tail that we wouldn't be able to grab. But now I'm ready to go. So what I'm going to do is drop my presser foot. And stopping and starting, uh, you could either um, tie, you can just kind of go from here and then maybe knot uh, the thread and bury it later. Or if you're just doing like a utility quilt, you can give yourself a couple little stitches to lock everything in place and then off you go. So I would wait just a second uh, just to kind of clear my head a little bit, figure out where I want to go, what I want to do, and then off you go. And these Janome machines just free motion so beautifully. They just work so nicely. Now, again, I am creating the design. So the feathers that you're seeing, I'm using the speed of the machine in conjunction with the speed of moving my hands. And so very quickly, I'll talk about that. There is now, usually I don't say, I don't make promises and I don't say, trust me on this, but on this case, I will. Trust me that there is a speed that you're going to set your machine and a speed that you're going to move your hands that are going to work together. 
there'll be a symbiotic relationship. There is a speed there, but you have to practice to find out what that is. You may be a faster quilter than I am, and you're comfortable with that. You may be like, oh, that's way too fast. I got to slow down. Absolutely. It is your project. It is your rules. So you may want to just put the pedal to the metal and, and just go for it and just quilt as quickly as you can, or you're more comfortable slowing down. Either way, you have to practice and find out which speed that is for you. Now me, I'm about halfway um, from slow to fast on my machine. And that's pretty good for me. Now, what's wonderful about this slider is it's just like, again, it's like a skater on the ice. It's just so nice to have the uh, ability for this to just flow so smoothly. We could do some echoing. Do some circles. Some little swirly type things. Then you can stop, and again, you can take a couple little, couple little stitches. Now I'm going to raise my needle, and raise my presser foot, and slide my project. And now what that did is it released the tension discs, so I can just trim my thread. Now again, you want to leave a little bit of a tail, so that the next time you start, you're going to have your bobbin be able to pull right up from where you were. So that's really all it is. It's not hard. You just have to practice it. So let me get back to my other camera here. So there we are. Really, folks, it's that simple. So let me tease you with some of the, some of the samples I was telling you. Here's an abstract design that I worked on. Um, what I did here is I took uh, some white silk dupioni, and I put some freezer paper on the back, cut it to 8.5 by 11, and ran it through my inkjet printer. Don't do this with a laser printer because you burn your house down, and that's not good. <laughs> so use an inkjet printer. And then you can see on the back, I just did thread painting. So I used the designs that were already there uh, and just thread painted over them. Here's a feathering sample that I did in neons. I love neon threads. Love them. They're so much fun. Um, this would be really great on a black background, too. I just wanted this to be a little more subtle. Now, remember I said I use unusual fabrics? There is a dancewear spandex sampler. <laughs> See, I use all sorts of wacky stuff. But look how cool this looks. Look how shiny. All I did is I, did, I used a spandex, and I used a very thin fusible interfacing on the back, took all the stretch out, and then uh, sandwiched it together like I did a normal quilt and just quilted over the top of it. And it did a beautiful job. Again, just using a regular 80, 80 needle, nothing fancy. Now, on this one, I also used a spandex, but I wanted it to look like hammered metal. So it's a gold spandex. Now, remember, this is costuming material. It is washable, right? So you could use these in quilts. Um, absolutely. Like a little square of it. You don't have to be committed to a whole a whole big piece if that makes you uncomfortable. But you could use just a little piece and you're ready to go. Now, one thing that our Janome machines do beautifully is couching. So this is a metallic yarn that has been free motion couched onto a piece of my hand dyed fabric. And then I use some metallic, I'll get this in a little closer, uh, use some metallic thread to kind of echo around and go through. So this is a work in progress. Now, what other things can you use this on? So I made a um, Janome notebook cover, right? Using the 100, 100 anniversary fabric. Now, you could free motion quilt on that. How cool would that be to um, layer this together with a little bit of thin batting and then just kind of go around each of the designs, nothing fancy, use a black, a black thread, and that'll hide everything. So that's another tip for uh, those of you who are not familiar with this. Um, if you're just getting started, I suggest that you use a thread that matches your background. That way, if you have any little boo-boos, you won't really see it. Clothing. If you wanted to jazz up, I had a, um, a jack a little dated, um, and I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I brought it over to my machine, and I free motion quilted some metallic uh, feathers on the lapel. And that is my most go-to jacket now. So everyone's like, where did you get that? And I said, well, I added some stitching to it. I, I sort of made it myself. So, um, But that's it, folks. So I can't wait to see what you come up with. Again, just give this a try. Give it a practice. 
be very kind and gentle with yourself. And I know that you're going to be able to do this. I can't wait to see what you do. So let me see what, um, let me go through some of the comments here. Let's see. Vivian, yeah, finding that sweet spot, it's there. That I will promise. Um, you have to practice. There's a speed that, that you're going to, a symbiotic speed where your hands and your machine are going to work as one. And you'll know it. It's just a thing that you'll know. Um, it, you'll feel, if you're going too fast, you're going to feel out of control. If you're going too slow, you're going to be like, ugh, this is going to take forever. But then as you practice and speed up your machine, slow it down, which, whichever was comfortable for you, you're going to find it. And it's going to feel really good. And you're going to feel very much in control. So there we go. All right. What other questions do we have here? Any more questions? Any more questions? All right. Yes, Margie, now it's time to get busy. <laughs> now it's time to, to get on. And again, I can't wait to see what you all come up with. Um, again, I am Jerry Granada. I'm going to close out this session. I will be back next week, by the way, uh, on July 6th, I believe is the date. Um, I'm going to be talking about sergers. And so we're going to do uh, we're going to do like a, a lettuce ham and a rolled ham. Uh, so we're going to be talking sergers. So I can't wait to see you. If you get a chance, please stop by next Wednesday. I'd love to see you um, again. Jerry Granada. Genomi educator, and I would love to see you. If you get a chance at an event, you see me at a show and event, come on over and say hi. I'd love to chat with you and see what you're working on. Bring me something to, to see. I love show and tell. So until next time, until next week, um, please, please, happy sewing. Happy sewing. Stay safe, stay well, and we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>